Okay, so ha after having learned that hindrance is going to be another or rather the very important factor, the most important factor in determining the rate of reaction via SN2 mechanism. Now we are in position to comfortably answer this little question of uh, the first question that we were discussing. We have to give the order for rate of reaction in this uh, set of given compounds or substrates. Now uh, let me quickly recapitulate what we have done. We have studied four factors and these four factors you have to play with to get all the answers regarding SN2 mechanism. The first and the most important factor concerning the rate of reaction would be hindrance. The second would be leaving group. The third would be solvent. The fourth would be nucleophilicity. Now although they are not in the order of precedency but generally by and large hindrance would be the most important factor to look at. Now given here uh, the solvent, nucleophilicity and the leaving group all the same so the factor we are left with is hindrance and clearly and uh, as the degree of the carbon at which the leaving group is attached is increasing the hindrance would also increase because the antibonding of this carbon at which the electron will be doled in by the nucleophile is surrounded by three methyl groups. Here you have two methyl groups, one hydrogen. Now although we have written it straight but this will not be, these two methyl will not be at 180 degree with respect to each other rather it would be it would be like this. So the angle would be 109 degree of each methyl with hydrogen. So uh, and in between these three would be the antibonding orbital. So it will be surrounded by two methyl and one hydrogen here. Two, one methyl and two hydrogen and here all the three groups are hydrogen. So the least hindrance that would be offered will be at one degree carbon or rather zero degree carbon. Zero degree carbon will have all the three hydrogens then one degree carbon, two degree carbon and three degree carbon. Three degree carbon means the carbon is attached with three other carbons. Here this carbon is not attached with any other carbon so this is a zero degree carbon. So if you want to see the rate of reaction then the rate of reaction would follow the extent of hindrance. Or rather sorry the reverse of extent of hindrance. If extent of hindrance is high the rate of reaction would be less. If the hindrance is more less the rate of reaction would be more. Now here you have to know that in 3 degree carbon the SN2 reaction do not proceed via SN2 mechanism. The product coming via SN2 mechanism is negligible. The hindrance becomes so large that even if the nucleophile is very small the reaction do not take place through SN2 mechanism it would take place via some other mechanism. But in 3 degree carbon if the substrate is 3 degree, the carbon at which the living group is attached is 3 degree, then SN2 reaction would not occur. The fastest rate of reaction would be with 0 degree. 1 degree will also give considerable amount of uh, product or the rate of reaction would be considerably high. With 2 degree, it would be so-so. Not very much, not very high, but with 3 degree, it would become negligible. So if we have, you have to bear this in mind that with 3 degree carbon you will not proceed your reaction through SN2 mechanism. We have SN1 mechanism for that matter. Right? Now suppose I keep my uh, the degree of the carbon uh, I keep the same. In this case I am keeping it at 0 degree and I am changing the leaving group. Now suppose these are four sets of substrate and we are talking about arrange the following in the order of rate of reaction or ascending order of rate of reaction in case of SN2 mechanism. Then uh, um, uh, considering solvent is same, uh, considering nucleophile are same and the hindrance or the degree of carbon are also same but the leaving groups are different so the fourth factor would uh, differ in all the cases. Now the extent of reaction will be more in the one in which the living group is more ready to leave out then the living group would be more ready to leave out if it leaves out in a, in a more stable form now here Cl- minus will leave out Br- minus, I- minus and F- minus now the one which is most stable ion will be the most good living group so here uh, we know that as the size of the ion increases because 
they all are refer from a same group and down the group the size of the atom increases and as the size of the atom increases so does the size of its orbital and as the size of orbital increases the density of electron in the orbital decreases that makes it more stable that's why HI is the most strong acid followed by HBr then HCl HF is a weak acid because F- is relatively very less stable than Cl- minus or Br- minus or I- minus. now this thing we have seen and we have talked about at great length previously so the most stable ion would be I minus followed by Br minus followed by Cl minus and last but not the least F minus. So the order of reactivity would be C greater than B greater than A greater than D. This would be the correct answer. Now suppose Now suppose I'm keeping the substrate same and I'm carrying out SN2 mechanism via different set of nucleophile. So if I take methyl anion in one case and carry out SN2 mechanism and I study the rate of reaction for that. If I do the same with amide ion NH2 minus or if I do, do it with hydroxide ion. Now I have to compare the rate of reaction if I do it with fluoride ion. Now we have to study the rate of reaction for different cases or we have to predict the rate of reaction for different cases. Now if the nucleophile is a strong one then the rate of reaction will be high. Nucleophile will be unstable and very quickly it will put its electron into the empty orbital of the carbon and uh, getting rid of its unstability. If the relative rate of nucleophile increases and nucleophile not be in a great hurry to put its electron or be dispensed off with its electron because if it, it is quite stable if the if it is capable of holding up the charge then it won't be having a great hurry to do away with its electron which is uh, which it is not able to carry so if the stability of the nucleophile increases then the rate of reaction will decrease and the stability we will decide stability is decided on two factors now one of the factor is electronegativity and the other factor is size now if now remember I have already told you but this seems to be important enough to be told again now if the if the atoms belong to same period then we look at electronegativity because in a same period size almost remains constant the size factor is not reasonable is not a strong enough factor to or the variation in size is not enough so that the uh, chemical property would change as per the size because variation in size is negligible in a same period so we don't look at the size factor we look only at electronegativity while looking at the stability of anions if they belong to the same period, uh, same group, then the electronegativity and size both changes and electronegativity decreases and size increases. If you look as per electronegativity, then as you move down, then electronegativity value decreases. That means the capability of holding the negative charge decreases. So the negative ion ought to become less stable down the group but the size increases size increases that means the diffusion of electron into the orbital increases that ought to make it more stable so you get opposite answer with electronegativity factor and size factor and you have to remember this always and always size factor dominates over electronegativity factor down a group so you don't look at electronegativity factor down a group you look at the size factor across a period you look at electronegativity now Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine are consecutive elements of second period. Atomic number 6, 7, 8, 9. So they belong to the same period. So they belong to the same period, so size remains almost same for all of them. So we will look at electronegativity factor. Now the one which will have higher electronegativity will have more capability of holding that negative charge, making that negative charge more disciplined and well behaved, not urging the atom to put that negative charge into the empty orbital of some other atom. So electronegativity as electronegativity increases 
the stability of the nucleophile increases which decreases the rate of reaction so fluorine is the most electronegative element of periodic table we have seen this i have told you at least 100 times followed by oxygen followed by nitrogen carbon has the least electronegativity among the atoms we see in organic chemistry carbon and hydrogen are the least almost having the same so fluorine is the most electronegative followed by oxygen followed by nitrogen followed by carbon so that makes fluorine most stable if it is more stable so it will not be going very fast for the reaction so rate of reaction will be less rate of reaction will be most in the case of most unstable that happens to be a so the rate of reaction order would be a the most because the nucleophile is the least stable followed by b followed by c followed by d so this will be the answer for rate of reaction in this case next let's uh, try to find out the rate of reaction for these cases now we have to arrange these three substrates as per the increasing rate of reaction or decreasing rate of reaction whatever give the order for rate of reaction for these three substrates now considering solvent is same nucleophile is same and here the leaving group is also the same so looking at the substrate we have to find uh, then we are we are left with the fourth factor that is hindrance so you just have to identify in which substrate the hindrance is more now if the nucleophile comes to attack then it will be hindered by these two methyl groups here the nucleophile come to attack now the thing is the nucleophile uh have to come very near to this anti bonding this anti bonding will be inside the ring now to come very near to the anti bonding either it have to be above the ring or below the ring or it have to get inside the ring to be come to come very close to it now uh, here the methyl group will be at some angle right at 109 degree and the nucleophile will have still have some space to come in in the mid of the path to reach very close to the anti bonding of this carbon and come close and initiate the reaction here that chance is not there to come this way from the middle of the path either it have to be above the ring or below the ring if it is really very small as small as hydride and then it might get into the ring to pour its electron into the anti bonding so hindrance offered because the anti bonding is surrounded by all the sides because of this ring so it becomes more difficult for the anti bond uh, for a uh, incoming nucleophile to come in the vicinity of this anti bonding and starts the reaction so definitely because of this ring the anti bonding is more safeguarded than in case of open chain so the rate of reaction will be considerably less than that in case of open chain now if we come here then here we also have pi bonds apart from uh, the hindrance due to the ring now this case is, is interesting and you must identify two very important uh, factors operating here the one of the thing is because of the electron cloud this electron cloud there are 6p orbitals and these 6p orbitals have electronic cloud density above the ring and below the ring those p orbitals will have one of the lobe above and one of the lobe below so there will be electrons revolving all around above and below the chain so there is and the anti bonding is just inside the ring there is no way that a nucleophile can come near to the anti bonding because above the ring you have electron cloud density nucleophile is also electron rich there will be repulsion between this electron cloud density and electron in the nucleophile so it cannot come very close because at above the ring there will be electron cloud repulsion below the ring there will be electron cloud repulsion but and neither it can fit into the ring because it can't come into the ring because the size factor will not allow plus it can't come uh, through above or through below the plane of the ring because of repulsion so by no way a nucleophile can come very close to this anti bonding so because this anti bonding is very strictly safeguarded by the nuclear Cl electron cloud density above and below the plane of the ring this is one of the factor that nucleophile will not come even very close to the anti bonding another factor is this chlorine this chlorine is doing resonance with the ring because of the lone pair 
So because of the resonance, there will be some double bond character at this point. And because of that double bond character, when chlorine leaves out, it has to break a bond which is more than which is having more than single bond character. So it will be somewhere midway between or between somewhere between a double bond, pure double bond and a pure single bond. So it that will make chlorine more difficult for chlorine to leave out the substrate because it has to break two not two bonds but a bond which is having a bond order of more than one. 1.3, 1.2, whatever we can't say that, but definitely more than one. So more amount of energy is required to break a bond of bond order more than one. So it that will make more difficult for the chlorine to leave the substrate. So these two factors cumulatively makes it impossible for a nucleophile to operate SN2 mechanism in the substrate. And this will come again in SN1 and we will see in SN1 for different reasons. SN1 will also be not possible for this substrate. This substrate, this kind of substrate do not show SN1 or SN2. They show SNAR, a different kind of mechanism that we will be, see, we will be seeing later in the course, not in this lecture. So this is not going to give you SN2. So this is more inert towards SN2 than 3 degree carbon. Because in 3 degrees still, still if the nucleophile is very small, you still have some scope of SN2 reaction, no matter how, whatever less. But in this case, there is no scope at all. It will not at all give any product with uh, via SN2 mechanism. So if you have to arrange it, then this will have more rate than this and this will have much, much more rate than this. This will be having negligible rate for SN2 reaction.